I bought this absolutely mental looking thing the other day. Not because I needed it, or even if I got much use for it. But I got it because, well, look at it, it's cool as f This is a brand new Borg Warner. Borg Warner. Borg Warner. Yeah, this is a brand new Borg Warner compound twin turbo set. But a really good one. Like, I got it because to me it looked like it'd be good for, you know, aftermarket tuning side of things, size wise. And it really is. A lot of these are like really small, so they're no good. But this one, the big turbo, is good for about 550 horsepower. And it's basically, they're really, really modern as well. Both these turbos are basically EFRs. They've got EFR turbine wheels. And that's got an EFR compressor. This one's near as damn it, same style, but cast. This one's billet. And yeah, it's a proper bit of kit. And very compact. It's actually from the factory, mounted this way up. So it's very very compact it stands up you can see the oil feeds there so that's the how it should be sitting and yeah this is brand new unused i think this is about two and a half three thousand pounds normally but yeah it's not light but two turbos and manifolds combined you don't expect it to be, I suppose. This is the turbo inside. That's the underside. And yeah, from the factory, this would be the exhaust ports go into it. It's off, it's off a, um, a 5.1 litre four cylinder Mercedes. Um, so there would be two more manifolds, you know, exhaust ports coming off that so that's what that would be that'd be a joiner that'd just be an EGR port um, if I was going to use it I would either um, cut it off just there and just weld a conventional flange to it or maybe blank that off or maybe I don't know use them as ports going to your manifold and use that for an external wastegate because if this was fitted to a diesel it doesn't need another wastegate because they control it with fuel on a petrol engine you'll want a wastegate there to control the maximum boost level of it all but yeah if you're wondering how these work it's a compound setup which technically i think maybe originally the reason they used them was to allow very high boost with efficiency but it's, it's it's more than that it's not really that anymore they're mostly used to run decent amounts of boost but with lots of power so basically to get the spool up of the little turbo but the power of the big one the reason this is not possible on a lot of standard petrol cars is because the boost level is too low because while you could run this at really really low boost because these turbos are basically the work is separated out between them the boost pressure at each of them would be running this pressure ratio would be so low say like a typical standard production petrol car runs maybe 15 psi if that to run 15 psi on this because the boost pressure is multiplied basically each turbo would be running like nothing like 2 psi so incredibly inefficient so it's not worth it on um well it's not really possible on low boost petrols because the turbos are too inefficient but on modified petrol cars where you're running at least 20 psi these can will be more in the efficiency zone 
so it works out properly for them so for tuned petrol cars you know obviously on these there's some petrol cars running compounds 40 psi well some of the drag ones 100 plus you know and diesel um compounds some are running 200 plus but realistically you you know on a petrol below about 20 psi it's not worth it because the turbo efficiency would be too low but above about that which is honestly almost all tuned petrol engines these come into their own and then you've got the spool of the little one and the power of the big one um if you're not used to how these work basically air from your air filter goes into the big one which is the low pressure turbo at the outlet roundy round into the compressor of the high pressure turbo and then out of there into your intercooler and your engine on the exhaust side it comes out your engine into your exhaust ports and then into the little turbo and then out the little turbo into the big one and then out there to the exhaust but people will be like well isn't that restricting it it's like well yeah and that's why you have a wastegate that bypasses it so this normally controlled with the electronic actuator which bolts to it it's up to you if you use that i would i would just use it because it is a normal you could run a normal wastegate actuator like a pneumatic actuator but you know it's a factory it's electric because obviously modern stuff's fancy but either way this bypass opens which allows the gases to completely bypass the little turbo and go through here directly into the big one now i'll turn it over i'll show you where the bypass is that is the bypass pipe so obviously instead of going into the turbo it goes down here past the borg warner sign and through the wastegate flap that's behind there and then straight into the big turbo and then obviously once this combined is at whatever specified boost on a diesel it would just be limiting it with fuel on a petrol you'd want an external wastegate there to sort of limit the overall boost pressure and obviously this one you have set to open at whatever pressure you decide is best to open at it's probably whatever and it doesn't matter anyway because if you have this taking pressure from your inlet manifold then this will always be open once this is boosting because obviously this will compound the pressure so if this is running imagine this is running 15 psi before that's making any boost and this is set to open at say 20 once this starts making boost even like 5 psi or something it will go into there and compound with the 15 and make i don't know you'd have to do the sums but miles over 20 so this is always just fully once this is making boost this is going to be pretty much fully open unless you've got it obviously to set to really high pressure but you basically want it to be that to open whenever that's already you know when that's already spooling up and this turbo needs to just do far less work so yeah it's a pretty fucking incredible bit of kit and i love it but for my car even though it would fit lovely and just drive amazing and look crazy it it doesn't make enough power well it makes enough power for my current setup but i'm not going to change my current setup yet i want to and the next setup the big power one will be hopefully 700 plus so this will be too small so i'm going to uh i suppose i'm going to flog it if i had another another 180t this would be the one for it as like some insane response fucking monster i don't think i'd run the electronic actuator i'd, I'd just run a conventional one but you could if you wanted 
because I, I think these are like £500 on their own. But yeah, um, I'm going to take it apart now and you can see what's inside. I mean, it's obvious, but I'll show you more detail. It comes apart really easy, literally. V-bands on both the turbos. There's locating pins on the housings so you can only, you know, so you can't get them in the wrong place when you're taking them apart, putting them back together. And this part separates with just some bolts on the back. It's dead easy. So let me turn the camera off and I'll uh, take it to bits. Right, this is the twin turbo setup dismantled and yeah looks cool i basically run you through everything so obviously this is the big the low pressure compressor just a normal compressor housing nothing fancy and then the outlet of that goes to the link pipe which has actually got the four corner part numbers on it the link pipe this is how it's held together because it's rigid there's no clamps no nothing it's just literally this piece joins between it and it can't leak and it goes into the compressor housing of the small turbo which weirdly is cast iron they obviously use cast iron because it's near other really hot stuff so i guess they presume Aluminium might be too dodgy, but it's just a normal conventional compressorizing. And then obviously out to your intercooler and engine. On the turbine side, obviously that is the big turbo. That is the big turbo inlet. And that is the bypass of the small turbo. It's just a normal wastegate flap. It's actually mounted in that bit, but I'll show you in a minute. That is just the mounting bracket for the electronic actuator. That is the gasket for these two parts. So, so that basically blocks that off. Forces the gases to go through the manifold and out of there into the turbine, whereas if this is open, it can bypass it via there and out of here. So it misses the small turbine and goes straight into the big one. These are the turbos. This one is basically the same size as a KO4 from a 18T. So it's good for about 300 horsepower. It's way better than a 180 though, because it's basically got EFR wheels. It's got the full back turbine blades, which is an EFR thing. What they're made of, I don't know. Maybe it's that Gamma TI stuff, like the EFRs. They feel light, but who knows about taking it apart. But it's got the full back blades where the, the bottom of the wheel there goes all the way to the edge. Look at almost any other turbine wheel. They're not like that. Obviously, fancy billet compressor. Again, it's the EFR shape. The blades are how EFRs are. This is mm, good for maybe about 300, but it doesn't really matter because it's a small turbo. The small turbo's job is mostly to spool up fast and spool the big one. The big one is very close to a EFR 7076 which is like a 600 brake turbo it's basically got 76 and 70 so the same as a 7670 efr and that's an efr style wheel because again the full back uh, design and all that and if you look at even the design this is efr the, the highly curved blades blah 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 um, and yeah, the difference is this is very slightly smaller on the compressor inducer and turbine exducer. This is about 550 horsepower, I'd say, whereas the EFR um, 7670 is rated to 
about 600, 620. I would say this is 550 or so, but it's still a hell of a setup. Basically on anything like from like about a one point, not much, 1.6 maybe. On a 1.8, it would spool up likely like a standard Audi TT does where full boost is 2000 RPM, 2500 RPM, but this will allow it to do maybe 550 horsepower. So yeah, it's a proper bit of kit, but um, it's no use to me. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna sell it. Anyone want it? I'm gonna put it on eBay, I think. Right, so yeah, that's that. Basically a very unplanned video that I've literally plonked this on a bed to show you. <laughs> it was the only clean space that I could uh, easily show you without any sort of background distractions. And yeah, it's a proper mega bit of kit. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it on eBay. Because as much as I want it, realistically, I've got no use for it. Um, I just wanted it to have a look at, and I've done that now. <laughs> if it was able to be making a bit more, like 600 plus, which is why I wanted it, so I could measure that, I'd probably keep it. Well, actually, nah, 700 plus I think I'd want. But yeah, this would make, for anyone wanting, like, up, you know, four to five fifty horse with like the spool up of a standard so yeah awesome turbo but not quite big enough for me ironically on my next setup i am highly likely to do a compound turbo setup because i want massive power without massively slow spool because especially for things like you know <clears throat> The things like roll racing and stuff like that, and it's, it's not such a big deal when you're drag racing, you know, from a standard start, but roll racing and stuff, especially. Now I've fucked off the nitrous, I would ideally want like a small turbo to be the, my nitrous for the big one, but this just simply isn't big enough. So, you know, I know this amount of power is insane to most people, but I'm stupid like that, and I so uh. Yeah, if anyone wants it, I'll put a link in the description to the um, eBay listing. And, uh, yeah. Now I better take some photos and try and list this thing. No idea about price. I'll uh, decide that when I write the listing. But, yeah. Random video, but there you go. See you next time.